What's up, everybody? This is Jose with Oakland Latinos Unidos, a.k.a. Oakland Latinos United, out here at Rockville Hills Regional Park in Solano, California. We're about 15, 20 minutes outside of Fairfield. This is a beautiful place I come to once in a while. Look at that rock formation up there. It's just beautiful. It reminds me of being in Mexico or something. But this is a, a, skate, uh, a skate park, a regional park, and... Um, I'm here today on this beautiful hot day. The Bay Area was actually really hot. We got hit with a heat wave because uh, I'm a sucker for history. And those of you who know me long enough or have been watching my videos long enough know that I love history and I love researching and studying history. And I'm here to tell you a story that you were never taught in high school or in school that probably you never even knew happened. And this happened right here where we're standing in California and this is part of California's indigenous history California's genocide of indigenous people and it's also part of California's Spanish Mexican history as well so let's go back to the year 1810 here where we're standing this land was called Yul Yul at that time now it's called Rockville but when the Native Americans were here, it was called Yul Yul. And the native tribe that was here was called the Sassoon. And they were part of the Pactuin Nation of, of Native Americans from this area. The Sassoons were a tribe that would refuse to be colonized. And I'm going to tell you what happened and why. But the Sassoon people are the reason why the city Sassoon is called Sassoon, right there by Fairfield, Sassoon City. But in 1810, basically... The Spaniards were colonizing California, and these Spaniards had colonized most of the Bay Area. They had colonized San Francisco, which was called Yerba Buena, and Mission Dolores, and the San Francisco Presidio. They colonized much of what is Oakland, you know what I mean, San Jose, um, you know, Monterey. And that region was the Ohlone region of the Ohlone people, the Muwekma, Chochenio, and various other tribes, the Carquines. And they had colonized the areas that today are Richmond, San Pablo, you know, San Rafael, Marin County. All those areas had been colonized by the Spaniards by 1810. But this area we're at now hadn't been colonized. And the mission system wanted them to colonize this area. The tribe that was here, like I said, was the Sassoon. And the Spaniards were going to come colonize the Sassoon people. And when the... The Spanish finally came in 1810. It was led by Gabriel Moraga. Now, Gabriel Moraga was um, a military officer in, in the Spanish army. And he was a criollo from Sonora, Mexico, who had helped colonize him and his family, colonized San Jose and formed the Pueblito of San Jose, which was the first, I guess you could say, Spanish-Mexican town. And many of you who don't know, the, the Spaniards or... They weren't even Spaniards, they were really Criollos, Mestizos, and Indigenous and Mulatos came during the De Anza, the De Anza expedition to colonize Northern California and they colonized basically the Bay Area and Monterey County, which is today Monterey County. But this area had been untouched, so Gabriel Moraga was given the duty to colonize this area for the Spanish crown and for the mission system. When they crossed, crossed the Carquinez Straits, which is where Crockett and Vallejo meet, there were met re resistance on the Vallejo side by the, by the, uh, the um, Sassoon people. And they, they pushed them back with arrows and, and, and spears. The Spaniards went back, regrouped, and came back with a bigger army and with guns and gunpowder and swords and and cannons and superior weapons, basically. And when they came back to the Carquinez Straits, the indigenous people had no chance. And the Spaniards drove them back in a battle that probably lasted about a week, they, I read. And they drove them back to this area, to their native land, to their homeland, which is Yul Yul, which is what this area is called, was called back then by the indigenous people. Moraga basically surrounded the indigenous people here where we stand and massacred them. He killed, hung, and, and also basically those who, who were skilled in battle 
who were inside their little huts or their teepees or whatever, he basically lit the, the teepees on fire or the dwellings on fire and burned them alive. He burned a lot of indigenous people alive. And the rest, like I said, were slaughtered, were killed in battle, hung, and various other, you know, torturous ways. There were survivors from what I read, and many of those survivors were kids. There was also many indigenous people who just fled to those hills you see over there in hiding. And basically the Spaniards colonized this area and they massacred the Pactuin Sassoon people. The, the chief I read was named Malika and he was the chief of the Sassoon people in the valley of Yul Yul, which is where we're at now. One of the survivors of the, of the massacre was a Sassoon indigenous man who's, who they said ended up being a six foot seven tall indigenous person. His name was Sita. His, uh, he uh, he's was also named Sita Semieto. And his Spanish name or colonized name was Francisco Solano, which is what the county of Solano is named after. So yes, yeah, Solano County is actually named after an indigenous Sassoon Native American. Look it up. And uh, basically, Semieto or Francisco Solano was colonized in the mission system. He learned to speak Spanish. He learned to read and write. He became a military officer in the, in the later Mexican army because, got to remember, it went from being Spain in 1820 to being Mexico. He became friends with Vallejo or General Mariano Vallejo. And he, he was one of the first Califor one, a Californio, an indigenous Californio who purchased all this land under the Mexican land grant movement. And basically he was an indigenous Californio and he reclaimed his land, sort of say. And um, yeah, he held it down until he passed away and this became part of the US. And then I guess they changed the name from Yul Yul to Rockville. But yeah, this is Rockville. California, look it up on the map, look up the Sassoon Massacre in 1810, Gabriel Moraga. Actually, the interesting thing is Jose Joaquin Moraga was the son of Gabriel Moraga, and his he was a Californian who owned land in what today is Orinda and Moraga, California. So that's where the name Moraga, California came from. But yeah, Gabriel Moraga was an indigenous killer who massacred a bunch of indigenous people in this parking lot we're in today so now you know the story you know I've been coming since I read that story I've been coming here for about five years now I come here every summer I just love it I take walks and I don't know something calls me back over here maybe it's the ghost of those people that died here many 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 years ago what's that like 210 years ago 209 years ago and yeah it's just a story you're never gonna hear but it's also very tranquil and quiet and just beautiful up here, man. Look at those rock formations up there. I guess that's why they ended up calling it Rockville. It almost looks like you're in Mexico or something. But yeah, hopefully, you know, you learn this story. You look it up do your homework. And just know California history, the land you live in, you know. Sadly, the indigenous people of this land of Cali California, we call California. Back then, it was called Alta California or Las Californias. You know, they paid a heavy price, both from Spain, Mexico, and the United States. You know, they were massacred, many of them, and it, we never talk about it. That's a history that's never talked about. So, at least now you guys know the story, and hopefully you guys share it and let people know. This is Jose with Oakland Latinos United. Talk to you guys later. Late.